everybody. This is Carol, the dietitian. Um, this month we're going to talk about winter vegetables. I have a few set out in front of me, but we're going to really focus on those that are available to you readily at the store and ones that we might use here on campus to make you something delicious to eat. We're going to start out by showing you a few slides from a presentation that if we were able to do this in person, this is kind of how we do it. But I'm going to show you a few slides from this and then we're going to talk in detail about the nutrition information of some of these. All right, so we're gonna talk about squash, which many people, as you can see, call it a powerhouse of nutrition. The scientists do believe that squash have spanned the entire globe and that many squash, which we would call gourds, are still used for bowls, vessels, music instruments. The Europeans um, started to come across them and then they brought the seeds back to Europe even though squash was already native to Europe and then there's an interesting use of squash there at the bottom. Miss Skinner felt that if you pounded the seeds, rubbed it into your skin, and sat in the sun, it would take away all your freckles. Squash is actually considered a fruit. I think all of us would consider squash a vegetable, but it's considered a fruit. The botanists call it a fruit because it actually develops from a flower. There's two types of squash, the thinner skin summer squash, which is like your zucchini or yellow squash, and then your thicker skin squash, like a pumpkin. And pumpkins did start with the pilgrims at the first um, Thanksgiving and they were hollowed out, filled with milk, honey, and spices, and then they could be baked. Squash is considered one of the most nutrient dense foods that you can eat. It's very high in fiber and the fiber in squash is in the form of soluble fiber, which is really good for regulating your blood sugars and cholesterol levels. As a fruit, squash is naturally fat and cholesterol free. All of the calories come from carbohydrates in squash, very little from protein. And even though it is a carbohydrate-based food, it has a low glycemic index, which means it does not contribute to significantly raising your blood sugars. So squash versus pumpkins. As you can see here, I have some pumpkins, I have some squash, actually I have some Brussels sprouts too, because we're gonna talk about winter vegetables. But what is the difference? Pumpkin, all these are pumpkins, is just one type of squash. So all pumpkins are considered winter squash. They're planted in the summer, but they have a very long growing period. So that's why they're considered a winter vegetable. They can come in all different sizes. I didn't bring the giant ones, but they can be considered edible or purely decorative, like that one. Pumpkins are a good source of fiber, vitamin A, vitamin C, potassium, and the pumpkin seeds are one of the squash seeds that are edible. Not all squash seeds are edible, but pumpkin seeds are, and a half a cup of roasted pumpkin seeds gives you about four grams of fiber. So pumpkins to eat. This is an example of a good pumpkin to eat. This is a pie pumpkin. This is a nice sweet pumpkin. They tend to be smaller and round, not this size, about this size. That's a good pie pumpkin. I found a pumpkin when I was researching online. It was called a Long Island cheese pumpkin. And it was basically named that because first of all, it grows in Long Island, but second of all, big round, like a big wheel of cheese. I couldn't find one here in Carroll County, but if you ever come across a Long Island cheese pumpkin, apparently they're really good to eat. But these pie pumpkins is what you would want to do to make your pie, or you could dice these up and you could saute them as well. Field pumpkins are the great big ones, and they're usually used for decorating or making your jack-o'-lanterns. I found a record that the heaviest pumpkin recorded in the United States weighed 2,300 pounds. So field pumpkins are very watery, they're stringy, they're not very good to eat. And recently I've seen a lot of these white pumpkins. When I was little, I don't remember seeing these white pumpkins at all. Now I see them everywhere. If you cut into these, they're actually very good to eat. The flesh inside is really, really a bright orange color inside, but most people use these for decorative. Um, pumpkins are associated with Halloween and some of the names of the pumpkins remind you of Halloween. I found pumpkins named Knucklehead, Warty Goblin, Blue Doll, and Baby Boo, all names of pumpkins. These very small pumpkins are called Jack B. Littles, and they're very useful for decoration. Along with these, these are gourds. So these gourds are definitely not edible. They are a form of squash. They're grown for purely for decorative purposes. They're usually considered lumpy and bumpy. And I think this one right here, probably perfect example of a lumpy and bumpy gourd. They're bitter tasting and they therefore you cannot eat them. 
All right, so now we're gonna talk about some of the edible squashes. So let me move my pumpkins out of the way. Okay, this first squash right here, many of you probably already know what this is. This is an acorn squash, and if you look at it, it does resemble an acorn, very large acorn. It's acorn squash, it's mostly dark green. It has little splotches of orange and yellow. They're very um, nutrient dense, these squash, um, when you compare them with some of the other types of squashes around. They have high levels of folate, high levels of calcium, magnesium, and potassium. One cup of the cooked acorn squash has more potassium than two bananas. So I know a lot of us worry about our potassium intake. We're told to eat a banana a day. So a cup of squash is like eating two bananas a day. And they're also very high in fiber. These can be roasted, they can be baked, they can be steamed, mashed, they can be sauteed. You can use them in a lot of different ways. And they're also very good to stuff and eat right from the squash itself. So you can just cut the squash in half, scoop out the seeds. I flip it upside down a little bit, cook it off in the oven to soften it. But then when you bring it back up, you can stuff it with whatever you want to, and then just eat it right out of the shell. Okay, we're gonna to try to leave you guys some recipes when this is all over. It has a sweet, nutty taste, and um, you can scoop out the seeds and roast them, but the um, pumpkin seeds tend to be a little bit better to eat than squash seeds. The next squash is a butternut squash. This is the only one that I can truly recognize in the grocery store. This one has a bright orange interior, very few seeds, and this squash you can actually, it's relatively easy to peel. This one you just wanna slice. This one you can actually peel it if you would have to. It's very easy to saute. It's very delicious when roasted. It also mashes and purees very well. So this is why this often is the type of squash that you see in soup because it doesn't leave those long stringy fibers. So we use this a lot at soup. Um, it's also delicious in risotto dishes, stuffed in ravioli, and it's um, a very good source of fiber, vitamin C, vitamin A, as well as B vitamins. So this is your butternut squash. This next one, I picked a small one at the grocery store. These come quite big if you want to. This is a spaghetti squash, and this is one of the lowest calorie squashes. Again, all squashes are fat and cholesterol free, but they're not calorie free. Um, but this is a low calorie squash because it's very watery inside. And it's named a spaghetti squash. For those of you who've ever cooked one, um, once it's cooked and you take a fork and you slice it, it comes out strands like spaghetti noodles. When you first open it before it's cooked, it's just a solid mass of squash. But once you cook it, it goes into strands. It's lower in nutrient content than most, most other squashes. So it's not as high in vitamin A, vitamin C, fiber as the other ones. And it's often used as a substitute for pasta. So there's only 42 calories in a whole cup of cooked spaghetti squash. And like I said, you just scoop out the seeds, you bake it till it's tender, and then you use your fork to pull it out like long spaghetti noodles. And you can toss it with sauce to um, mimic the spaghetti, or you can just season it, butter, salt, pepper, uh, sprinkle Parmesan cheese, and use it as a side dish. It is a good source of fiber and some B vitamins. Now this next squash was new to me. This is called a delicata squash, okay? If they're small, this was actually one of the bigger ones that they had, they're oblong. They tend to be yellow, but they have green and then orange stripes, okay? This is one of the few winter squashes that actually has a thin skin, like your summer zucchini. So you can just take a vegetable peeler and skin this one. The flesh is very dense and it tastes sweet, kind of nutty. Um, a nice way to cook this is to just cut it into rings, toast it and roast it off with some butter, maybe some maple syrup or cinnamon, but it's a very delicious squash, very easy to cook. It is high in fiber, vitamin C, folate, and potassium. Now there's a lot of other winter squashes available. These were the ones that I could easily find at more than one grocery store. So those are the ones that I chose to talk about. The nice thing about squash is that being a winter vegetable, you can store not this one, but you can store squash and pumpkins for a very long time, like up to three, four months at a time, just in a cool, dry place. So if you have a cool basement, maybe a garage, or a, a, you know, a cooler place in your house, you can store these for quite a long time. They don't take well to refrigerating. This squash, the Delicata, because of its thin skin, they do recommend that you refrigerate it or use it within a couple weeks of buying it. 
There's some other winter vegetables that I wanted to talk about. I didn't bring examples of them all, but I'll just talk about them real quickly. Um, kale, that's one of your cold weather winter vegetables. It tastes a lot, some people like cabbage when you eat it, it has more of that cruciferous taste. Um, it's very high in fiber, high in vitamin K, vitamin C, vitamin A. A big bag of kale will last quite a long time in your refrigerator. It's not like your more delicate lettuces that get soft real quickly. So kale is a really good example of a good winter vegetable that you can stock up on. Carrots are considered a winter vegetable. They actually get sweeter in colder weather. So the carrots that are harvested this time of year, close to frost, tend to be much sweeter than the ones that you buy in the middle of the summer. Parsnips, which I have to say, I'm not a fan of, but parsnips are considered a winter vegetable. Collard greens, um, winter vegetable. Rutabagas, leeks, spinach, red cabbage, um, radishes, those are all examples of winter vegetables. Those should be things that you can find in your store right now that, um, you know, this is their peak season. Cauliflower. So I didn't bring in a head of cauliflower. You all know what cauliflower looks like. But you can find cauliflower not only in white, but orange, green, and I actually saw purple cauliflower the other day. Um, so cold weather, again, brings out the sweetness in the cauliflower. I did find a good tip about cauliflower in that it comes at the grocery store and it's wrapped very tightly in that plastic wrap. They recommend that you take off that plastic wrap and just store it in your refrigerator, just lightly covered, because the plastic wrap kind of makes it rot. Um, cauliflower is very high in fiber, vitamin C, folate, and potassium, and you can boil it or steam it. You can also roast it, eat it raw, and then my daughter's favorite way is to pickle it, pickled cauliflower, all right? The last thing I brought to show you were Brussels sprouts because up until a few years ago, I did not realize that this is how Brussels sprouts grew. So I was fascinated when I first saw that. I actually think they're quite cute. But these are Brussels sprouts. They're named after a town in Belgium, obviously Brussels, where it was cultivated way back in the 16th century. They're a member of the cabbage family, and you would know that if you cooked them, and they're high in fiber, folic acid, vitamins A, C, and vitamin K. They grow on stalks, obviously, and the buds are actually the edible sprouts. Um, the peak season is from September to February. So I found this one at, at a local grocery store, but I've seen them in farmer's markets and grocery stores all over the place. If you leave them in the ground and just nip off the buds, then they're gonna re-sprout. But here, so you're just gonna nip these off. The smaller buds are definitely sweeter, taste better. Some of these great big ones, I don't know if I can break it off, you wouldn't want to cook a sprout like that. You would want to peel off a lot of those outer layers and cut off the end, get, get yourself a little smaller sprout before. But anyway, you can roast these, saute them, steam them, bake them into a gratin. And the other day, my husband and I went out to dinner, they actually had a Brussels sprout salad and they had taken the sprouts and just shaved them and they had a raw Brussels sprout salad, all right? Um, we're going to leave you some easy winter squash recipes. So thank you for tuning in. Be on the lookout for some of our new menu items that are coming out featuring some of these winter vegetables. And we'll have a handout over there by the bistro with some, um, just some more information about them and some recipes for you all. Thanks so much.